Kijkers, goeiedag. De Association of Caribbean States Conferentie is in volle gang in Suriname. Speciaal hiervoor is de secretary-general van ACS naar Suriname afgereisd. Hij is het afgelopen weekend in ons land aangekomen en heeft reeds al gesprekken gehad met de minister van Buitenlandse Zaken. Vandaag hebben wij een gesprek met hem. How are you? Thank you very much. Very well, thank you. Yes. What is your first impression of the conference so far? Well, I think that I have to congratulate Suriname for a great job at uh, preparing for this conference. We can see it all over the city. At, uh, there is really a, a lot of effort that has been put in making this a total success. And so far, it has been a total success. Yes. In which way did the uh, Secretariat uh, of ACS assist Suriname in this conference? Okay, uh, this is a joint effort. <coughs> yeah, as you know, Suriname is chairing the ACS right now. Uh, so we, all of the Secretariat contributes to the planning, the preparation, and the execution of the conference. But our job is really to bring all our membership, uh, 25 member states and 10 associates, but also invite our observers, 29, 29 countries from around the world. So uh, right now, as you know, the ACS is maybe the second organization in size uh, after the OAS. So what we have been um, able to do in this conference is bring uh, all the people from around the world to Suriname. So this is a great opportunity for Suriname to showcase uh, what it can bring to, to the region in terms of investment uh, and also to uh, bring to Suriname uh, a lot of uh, possibilities for trade and growth. Yes, uh, you <coughs> spoke about trade and growth, but what are the other focus areas of the uh, conference? Well, as, as you know, the focal areas of the ACS are really trade, uh, tourism, transport, environment, and disaster risk reduction. So all these areas are very important for this region and also for Suriname. So in that respect, uh, a lot of mention has been already made of connectivity, both physical in terms of transport, but also digital. And that, that is really an area of focus that can really uh, become important in the future because, as you know, there is no trade, uh, there is no growth, no development, but if there is no transport, there is no intra-regional trade. The same happens with tourism. You know, tourism is affected by the ways in the tourists can achieve or, or reach a country. And the connectivity here is an issue because of not enough connectivity, not good itineraries, not enough uh, connectivity in terms of airlines arriving and calling uh, the airports, but also we have to look at the future. What is it that we can really do, not only in Suriname, but in the region in terms of developing uh, food security uh, in the region? Because the only way for us to continue sur you know, surviving is if we have food. <coughs> and food needs to be transported. But transport needs to have a whole regional approach in terms of making it easy to fac facilitating trade. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge because we're all different countries and we all different, have different laws, different regulations, different processes. So we really need to allow people and trade to flow easier, but also we need to bring transport services. Yes, the expo uh, is already opened. You had uh, a visit there also with the president. And what is your impression about the expo? Well, I can see that there is a lot of effort in, on, on, be on behalf of Suriname to showcase products and services that are offered here. But this was also an opportunity to bring other countries. We, I could see that there were some stands that belong to some of the other regions. We have uh, a lot of hope that in between our observers that are here are also seeing that opportunity to increase trade with Suriname in, in itself, but also with the region. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sabonj, uh, this year uh, the ACS is 30 years. Um, what are the achievements so far? Well, to me, the most important achievement of the ACS is really being able to gather the member states and the associates to have dialogue because if there is no dialogue, there is no peace. And if there is no peace, of course, nothing can happen. So 
in that respect, our institutional survival is really a biggest achievement because, as you know, with COVID and all these other geopolitical situations, many intergovernmental organizations are really having a lot of trouble to, co to, to continue. Now, we are a multilateral organization that really has, I think, a, a, lot of, a lot of potential for the future because in these days, especially because of climate change and because of all the other uh, problems in the region, we need to be a bridge. That, that is what we bring to, the, to this uh, region. We, we are a bridge between our member states and, and external observers. Uh, to solve our, prob our common problems, because that's the other thing. When you when go around the uh, Suriname, you can see that there are a lot of commonalities with many of our member states. We all come from the same roots, yes. in, in a way, from colonialism, from uh, having to suffer uh, many similarities, and also having to fight for independence and having to fight for autonomy. So in that respect, most of our member states uh, have that in common. So what we need is to build solidarity amongst us, to come together, to face common challenges, and bring common, you know, uni unified solutions to the problems. Climate change, for instance, is something that doesn't respect, you know, borders. It doesn't respect political regimes. It doesn't respect different colors or languages or ethnic, ethnic, ethnicities. Climate change is just devastating everything it comes across. We can only look and look for solutions as, as, as united group. All of us, we need to come together, not necessarily to, to talk to, to, to amongst us, to talk to the world because most of climate change, the origin of climate change crisis, is not us. I mean, you, you heard it today, uh, Suriname is one of the neutral carbon countries in the world, one of three. So here we are contributing in a different way. It's ca actually the opposite. We're contributing to everybody else's well-being. I think that we need to ma monetize that. We need to make sure that everybody understands that this region is is really contributing to eliminate emissions in a different way yes. because we are we have the forest we have all the other renewables that are uh, really in, in in our region so in that sense we need to tell the world that we need to be treated fairly because climate change in itself builds a, a huge uh, inequality a, a huge, uh, it increases the vulnerability of most of our countries. Yes, uh, our former minister was also the chair. Uh, and uh, can you tell us about the new chair, the incoming chair? Of course. Well, this is something that I cannot say until the, uh, uh, it is discussed at the, at the ministerial council next uh, Thursday. But we have received the nomination of Colombia and that is going to be discussed. And of course, to us, that will be uh, a great thing because th uh, the ACS was born in a convention that was signed in Cartagena, Colombia. So returning after 30 years to its origins, it's always a good opportunity for us to reflect on the past and also look at the future yeah. to see how we can achieve more than what we have achieved so yes. far. Mr. Sabonj, what are your expectations for this conference? Well, I think that we are really in the beginning of our anniversary year. We actually uh, have our anniversary in July. But I really think that the amount of members that have come already, that, that is a guaranteed success. Because usually, you know, when, when you have 25 member states and uh, 10 associates, it is difficult to convene especially because you and I know the difficulties that we have logistically to come to Suriname. So to us, that's a great success to be able to have here already more than 20 of our member states uh, and also a large number of our observers and a large number of our associates. So, so in that respect, it is a success. Now, 
What comes out of it, of course, the agreements and everything that we uh, have to let the ministerial council uh, uh, agree to. That is already in the works. We have a preparatory meeting that will take place uh, next uh, Wednesday. And uh, in it, I'm sure that uh, we will have a lot more to say after the conference. I cannot tell you what, what will happen there. Yes, thank you very much for this moment.